afternoon. Thank you for joining me today. So today I'm going to talk about the novel technology of uh, iodine mapping for liver lesions. So what is iodine mapping? I think every, anyone who does CT imaging will know that CT contrast contains iodine. Uh, enhancing tissue and lesions will contain iodine. And so if we take iodine only images, we realize that these are actually surrogates of uh, contrast uptake. So how are iodine maps usually obtained? So iodine mapping is actually usually obtained from a dual energy or dual source CT system because what it does is that it relies on the differing absorption properties of iodine at both high and low energy level. So by so for example, if you look at this chart, you could see that you know we can use 100 kVp and 140 kVp, two different kinds of energy source, and then we use the difference to say that this to quantify the amount of iodine within the lesion. So this is how we actually can generate a uh, tissue iodine map. So here are some clinical examples. Uh, you could see that uh, on the image, there are some, perhaps some very um, small amount of iodine enhancement. Okay, can be difficult to appreciate if particularly uh, if you don't enhance this, prop uh, if you don't window the image properly. properly. But if you see, if you use an iodine map, okay, the enhancement is a lot more apparent. You could see that the very bright spots, the orange spots, those are enhancement. Those are iodine maps. Those are positive for iodine. So we know that there's enhancement. So the issues with uh, the dual energy or dual source system, it's actually a hardware. So you actually require a hardware and you can't really upgrade this from your pre-existing system if you don't have a dual energy or dual source system. And of course, we know it's actually quite expensive to have such a system. And generally, it has to be a pre-planned acquisition. Uh, so for example, you actually need to switch on your dual source if you decide to use both the tubes to image the lesion. You can't really decide to do it retrospectively. So the question here we have is, do we, is it actually possible to still obtain iodine mapping with a traditional single energy system? So the, un the answer actually is yes, because actually what we have here is that Ken Canon is doing this with a single energy system by using their shear subtraction software. The principle is actually quite simple. What it does is that it uses a pre-contrast sequence to subtract a pre-contrast sequence to actually obtain a contrast only image. So as you can see in the graph on the left, what you do basically is you just do a simple subtraction and you can get the iodine map. So here are some examples. Oh yeah, before I go on to that, I just want to explain. The trick into doing this properly is actually to have a very good subtraction software. Um, a lot of the challenge in doing subtraction is really be because of motion. Uh, you need to be able to correct the motion very well. So you can see there's two images here. One is the non-contrast and one is the arterial face. Uh, there's a slight difference in motion. So we try and subtract this. You could see for those of us who done quite a bit of uh, subtraction imaging, particularly maybe for more for MRI imaging, there is a mismatch. So really, this is not a very good image when it comes to uh, subtraction. And this, this will not work so well if we are trying to do iodine mapping. But uh, what Canon has is that they have the sure subtraction software with deformable registration. So they actually recognizes the points of the, the patient. So the patient in the patient, so what you, if you subtract it, you could see the subtraction is almost perfect. Okay, there's a uh, successful matching of the anatomical structures. So here we have some more beautiful images courtesy of Canon. You could see that um, the IOB mapping, the contrast, they are, uh, they are quite nice, okay? And they're very, very conspicuous. So how can IOD mapping help with our evaluation of liver lesions? Number one, we think that lesion, lesion conspicuity is much increased, leading to better detection. It's somewhat similar to what Dr. Pa was talking about when he was using the SMI. By using his SMI to make the lesions more conspicuous, IOD mapping to a certain extent also helped with this uh, detection. We think that a lesion characterization, characterization can be improved because uh, IOD mapping actually allows more confident detection of enhancement. And really, I think the most important thing to us, we think that it's actually quite useful in evaluating viability of liver lesions which has underwent local ablation therapy. 
So let me share some cases with everyone that we have uh, done clinically so that we can show these points better. Uh, my first case is a 76 year old man. He has a recurrent multifocal HTC with multiple taste therapy and local ablation. His most uh, recent taste was performed six weeks prior to this scan. So this is a pre-contrast scan. Everyone can see there's some lipidal optic here. And maybe this lesion, a little bit of rim optic. And this is the arterial phase. Now the reporting radiologist was not so confident. This is not so sure whether there's any contrast optic in this lesion. And I would say that, yes, it's actually quite difficult to us by looking at the uh, uh, CT itself. Let's look at the two other phases. Again, they are not really very helpful. We are still not very confident whether there's any uh, contrast optic. So depending on who's interpreting the scan, there may be differing opinions about whether this is still remnant tumor. So let's apply the IOD maps. So what we are doing here on the very left, you could see this is arterial minus non-contrast. This is venous minus non-contrast. And this is delay minus non-contrast. You could see actually there is definite contrast optic. Now, what about the lipoidal stain? You may be asking. Look, look at this other lesion which has a lipoidal stain. It doesn't light up at all. So you know definitely there's this actually contrast optic in the lesion. And you can see as you go through as the delay phase, there seems to be a little bit of washout in part of the lesion. So we're quite sure that actually now that this lesion is still viable. Let's move on to my second patient. This is a 50 year, 52 year old male patient. Hepatitis B had a, a recurrent multifocal HCC with previous hepatectomy. He had also underwent taste, and this is the surveillance CT that is performed two months later. So you can see there's a large mass here. There's a lot of lipidal optic. This is a non contrast. This is the arterial phase. This is the venous phase. And this is the delay phase. If you look at it, you're not so we're not so sure now. Is there a little bit of enhancement here? Maybe and around here? Not exactly sure. So let's take two this two of these images again, the arterial phase and the non-contrast phase, and then we subtract it. And there you have the IOD map. And look at where there is now some light up. This is where actually there's some contrast uptake. Now compared to where there's some lipidol, you could see there was no uptake at all. So we're quite sure there's actually some remnant tumor here. And then this is the delay phase. You could see the, the contrast actually part of, part of it is actually washing out. So definitely there's remnant, remnant tumor in this, uh, in this lesion. And then if we move slightly more inferior to the, of the, to the more inferior aspect of the liver, you could see there was actually a bit more enhancement in the more inferior aspect. And we go back to the look at the CT. Again, it was quite hard to see on the CT or on the enhancement depending on your windowing, but definitely this portion in the inferior aspect, there's some remnant tumor. And again, there's some washout that you could appreciate in the delay phase. This is my next patient, 82 year old gentleman, uh, previous HCC with hepatectomy. Uh, he had a new segment 5 lesion that was detected on surveillance and he had ablation. And of course, uh, as usual, we'll follow up his ablation about six weeks later. So this is, a, as everyone can appreciate, this is a ablation zone. Uh, very clean and neat in the arterial phase, part of venous phase, delay phase. Doesn't look like there's any uh, recurrent tumor, but let's do, let's do our due diligence, all right? Let's do, run an IOD map, okay? You could see the ablation site is very clean. There's no tumor. There's a little bit of enhancement at site, but that's quite usually expected post ablation uh, uh, perfusional changes. Let me run the whole IOD map once to let show everyone. The very same patient. Okay, there's one this ablation site. I wonder did any of you see anything? Let me try and run it again. Concentrate in segment five. This ablation side, and there you go. I'm just going to slow this down and show it, show this to everyone. Someone saw, you know, one of us actually saw it and, say, and said, look, it looks like quite a bit of nodular enhancement in this patch just below the ablation side. So with that, we went back to look at the 
uh, CT scan. There you go, this is the arterial phase. This is the venous phase. Now, is that washed out? If you do some windowing, you think actually, yeah, there may be some degree of washout. Right. And, we, and we put the patient through the MRI, and we're quite sure the lesion is actually, there's actually a new nodule here, just below the ablation site. So what we did in, in uh, Changi General is that we actually had a small preliminary study of 10 cases uh, retrospectively. So we had two abdominal radiologists to read them. Uh, one reader actually used the CT images and the IOD map, while the uh, other reader uses the CT images only. And what we do is that we compare this original interpretation with a follow-up CT scan in three to six months time, which we will use as a reference standard. And this is the breakdown of our results. So remember, um, reader one is the gentleman who has, um, now let me just recall what reader one has. Yes, reader one is the gentleman who actually had the IOD map, reader two was a gentleman without the IOD map. So you could see that we use Lyrets just to put everyone together. Lyrets five usually means definitive tumor. Lyrets two means benign. Lyrets three is uh, equivocal, but usually more likely to be benign. Uh, for for Lyrets TR viable and non-TR viable, these are for treatment uh, lesions that are treated. When, when we say viable, we mean that we think there is uh, remnant tumor. When we say non-viable, we think there's non uh, there's no more viable tumor. So you could see actually uh, reader one, the reader with the IOD map actually picked up more definitive, one more HCC and one more remnant tumor uh, when compared to reader two. Of course, it's a very small sample size. This is just 10 patients. But when we, so what we did is that we went back and compared this to reference standard. We found that the reader with the IOD map was actually 93% accurate in identifying and declassifying the liver lesions for our liver. Reader 2 was actually 68% accurate. So really the question that we have and we think is kind of answered is that was subtraction IOD mapping improve early detection of tumor recurrence after local regional therapy? We think this is really quite uh, useful and we certainly think that uh, this technique will actually help us detect uh, earlier tumors. And uh, what we have already planned and we already had the IRB already approved is that we're going to evaluate 100 patients for the next uh, two years. We're going to recruit them. So please do watch this space as we have, uh, we, we get them recruited and we will analyze it through and see whether uh, IOD mapping has really helped us detect uh, earlier tumors. So in conclusion, IOD mapping with a single source CT using a subtraction software is a new novel method which can be applied in liver imaging. Uh, IOD mapping improves the conspicuity of liver lesions leading to better detection. And we certainly think that IOD mapping can be helpful in evaluation of lesions which, has, which had underwent local regional therapy. Uh, with that, I end my talk. Thank you very much.